Welcome to my quick review for this lens, the Tamron 2875 2.8 for Sony mirrorless cameras. Save yourself some time, stop watching, click like obviously, but go out, buy this lens, it's freaking awesome. But for anybody else that wants to know a little bit more detail about it, stick around, I'm going to dive in a little bit more. Before I really dive into this, I would just want to say this is my own copy of the lens. I spent my own money on it. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm not being sponsored. Um, I basically went out and bought this last week. I've been playing around with it for about a week now. Took it to a wedding very recently and it performed amazingly well. I'm very, very happy with the results I'm getting from this lens at this very short period of time. Also, I'm on firmware version one, so it's not the new version of the firmware or anything like that because there was issues with the autofocus in video mode. For stills photography, I'm not a videographer, so for stills, absolutely fantastic. Didn't have any issues, but I will explain that in a little bit more in detail. Build quality for the lens, I'm somewhat impressed actually. It's not the highest grade kind of plastics in the world, but they actually feel really solidly made or put together. The zoom ring is obviously zooms the other way opposed to Canon, which is something you have to get used to um, being a kind of shooter myself. The focus ring is a focus by wire. There's no other switches or knobs on the lens or anything like that. So overall, the build quality is quite nice. The focus ring as well, I will say that it doesn't really move just by touching it or just by like, gently touching it. You can actually just rub your finger over it. It's not gonna move at all. At least my copy of the lens doesn't. Also, there is some mild weather sealing. There's a little bit of a rubber gasket just going on here. Um, how much weather sealing there is on the lens, it's reported to be just dust and moisture, you know, a few specks of water. Yeah, I could see that. But otherwise, I'm not gonna take this out to a or rain, but that's just me personally. It probably could handle it, but I don't wanna risk it. It comes with this nice petal lens hood, but who cares? And we also get this nice, kind of grippy kind of lens cap as well. So overall, it's pretty nice. It doesn't weigh that much either. Um, the weight of this lens, it feels quite nice actually. It's not too heavy, not too light. Even when you've got it on a camera, it feels quite nice actually. It's not too front heavy. I actually had a quick play with the G Master in a shop recently, side by side with this actual lens, and the G Master felt way heavier. I mean, it is a heavier lens anyway, but this one feels nicely balanced. Um, I don't use gimbals or anything like that, so I can't really comment, being a photographer. And I had no issues whatsoever with fatigue or cramp in my hands or anything like that. After a whole day shooting, I started shooting, I think it was nine o'clock in the morning. I didn't finish till... I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, or sunk roughly about that, those kind of times. Never had an issue all day. I shot uh, with this particular lens on this body, or one of the bodies I've got, over a thousand pictures with this particular lens, and it was fantastic. No focusing issues whatsoever at any point in the day. I'm not saying I didn't miss a shot, uh, but that's more down to human error if that did happen. Um, overall, fantastic. Can't rate this highly enough. It just, it just works. It just works. Focus speed is something that everybody's going to comment about. And honestly, I would say it's it's decently fast. It's not going to set the world on fire or anything like that, but it is decently fast. Going through the images on Lightroom, which is obviously just back here, we will dive in there in a second. But looking through the images quite quickly, I had no focus issues. I didn't feel like I missed focus at any point. The lens felt like it could handle everything I was throwing at it from uh, my point of view during the wedding. Never missed a shot that I know of. I've been through the images reasonably thoroughly uh, and yeah, it, the focusing seemed to be quite snappy. It's not the fastest focusing lens in the world, but it's definitely not slow either. It's kind of that middle of the road kind of ground, which is absolutely fine for me. You know, as long as it gets the job done, I wouldn't necessarily say it was fast enough for like high speed sports, I don't know, like ice skating or I don't know, biking or whatever it is, motor car racing, who cares? Fast paced sports, probably not the ideal lens, but for weddings, certainly, 
not an issue at all, not an issue. The Tamron lens is also quite resilient to lens flare. As you can see in this test, I've just pointed a torch directly into it. There is a little bit of flare depending on where the actual light source is, but overall I think it provides quite a good resilience against it. Obviously it depends on your tolerance for lens flare. Personally, I'm pretty happy with it. So when you look at the actual competition for this lens, what have we got? And I'm only going to count in the fixed apertures for these. So you've got the, what's it, the Sony 2470 f4, you've got the G Master at 2.8, um, you've got, what else have we got? Um, you've got the 24105 f4 as well, all decent lenses. And this one kind of falls in that kind of grey area because obviously it's a 28 to 75. Now for me personally, the 28mm over 24mm isn't really a big issue for me. Um, it's just a case of, I mean seriously, it's going from about here to about here. That's all you've got to do and you're going to gain those 4mm. Now if you want to spend out, what is it, here in the UK, Tamron lens is going to set you back 700 quid. Uh, and the G Master, uh, the 2.8, is going to set you back, I think it's about 1800 quid, 1750, something like that. So almost 1100 quid more for four millimeters. That doesn't seem worth it to me personally. And also, this lens, like I say, it performs like a champion, no issues whatsoever. Now, if you want to go out and you want to get the better build quality from the G Master, please go ahead that's probably going to where your money's going to be better spent if you're looking for pure build quality and weather sealing obviously but when it comes to image quality we're going to dive into the Lightroom in a second promise you I was blown away honestly just looking at the images on the back of the camera and now I've dived into Lightroom the images coming out this lens it's a heavy hitter it looks absolutely fantastic in fact let's do this so here we are in Lightroom and I've just grabbed some quick files from the, the wedding I covered at the weekend. Um, these aren't fully edited images or anything like that. So you can see this one just here is a little bit underexposed. But I would just want to give you a basically an idea of how the lens performed in different situations. So let's have a quick look at this first one. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. I just want to show you just how sharp this lens can be. So when we zoom in, remember I've got a kind of basic kind of uh, edit on these and you can see the skin pores and everything in here and it looks really good down here on the necklace we're not get, really getting any chromatic aberrations or anything like that and in the background the bokeh looks relatively smooth um, and that's just a quick shot basically nothing majorly amazing about it is in the uh, the bride's home or the bride and groom's home so it wasn't a fancy country estate or anything like that it's just a nice simple kind of location which is quite cool for the next image, again, just a very simple one, just using some side window light. You can see up here, there's not much in the way of uh, vignetting or anything like that, or darkening in the corners. I certainly haven't brightened them up for this video. Uh, and again, the actual sharpness of this lens, if you can see here, we can see just basically everything. And this is shot at uh, 2.8 as well. So yeah you can see very very sharp lens very happy with it i will clean these images up as well just clean it up her forehead um, but again these are unedited images the next one is at just at the venue it's a nice simple barn kind of location here in suffolk uk um, again you can see here in the corners um, very it's not very dark at all this is shot wide open at 2.8 um, so that's a very good sign it's a little bit darker i might say maybe up to a stop darker um, in certain situations but nothing drastic in the center we can see very good resolution you can see actually the wire meshing here the guys um, yeah it's very good this is obviously not in the focus plane but very good sharpness I would say absolutely fantastic even going across here that's very sharp I'm very happy with this Again, another quick shot. Um, again, these are all shot wide open. You can see it's a little bit darker now in the corners. Um, but again, it's not majorly dark. That's maybe a, what, a stop darker. I think that's a bird or something just there that would be removed. Um, but the colors, again, look very good. I'm very happy with them. Um, sharpness wise, it's it looks absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, the, this is obviously not in the focus plane because um, I was focusing down here which is a little bit of a distance away but the areas that are in the focus plane look incredibly good and also there's very little uh, or next to no uh, distortion on the lens um, this is probably not the best picture to show that but there isn't much 
With this particular image, this my light stand in the background will be edited out in the final version. But I just wanted to show you um, in a difficult kind of situation about how it focuses and also chromatic aberration. You'll typically get a chromatic aberration in this kind of area here. And as you can see, there's a tiny bit of green um, just here, but I can't see any purple. And if we look up here, uh, there's a tiny bit up here which is actually quite easy to remove, no problems at all. But my focus was obviously on the bride for this picture. And this is quite a difficult kind of location uh, to potentially get that focus. So it did very, very well. This dog was very erratic with his movements, didn't really keep still. But as again, I tried to get uh, the best shot I could under the circumstances. Also, what you'll be able to see in this picture is the bokeh in the background or bokeh, however you want to pronounce it. It can be slightly busy in sections like this just here. Um, it's not bad at all. I don't think it's uh, the best bokeh or bokeh I've ever seen, uh, but it's not terrible. Uh, and I'm more than happy to hand over an image like this for my bride and grooms. But I just wanted to show you again the sharpness of the lens. It looks really, really sharp, no issues there whatsoever. The bokeh, again, in the background is a little bit busy for my liking. Is it terrible? No, um, but it's not anything amazing. It's certainly not like a 1.4 lens, but again, this is a 2.8. It is shot at 2.8 up here, as you can see. Um, or maybe you can see a little bit better now. I don't know, there, that's easier. Overall, it renders the images very nicely and you can see there's very little distortion that you can really tell in a real world situation. This one is quite an interesting picture. It's nothing amazing, but basically just trying to latch onto focus on this gentleman just here through this, it was almost like a, a ladder that was like uh, position. So you, it's like a garden game. You just throw these bean bags through it for different scores. Um, but I just want to get the focus on him and you can see it landed. It's Perhaps not the best picture ever, but it did work. And yeah, it's gonna be a nice natural kind of picture. Uh, another one with the bride and groom, obviously. Uh, the bokeh actually looks a lot smoother in this instance. Um, so it's, sometimes it's down to the actual light and how it's bouncing off objects. Um, as you can see up here, it's a little bit more busy, uh, but up down here it's not. And this is basically where the light was hitting the leaves a little bit more. Over here with the bride and groom, as you can see, basically it's nice and sharp. I can actually make out where the makeup has rubbed off ever so slightly, where they're kind of hugging each other. Um, so yeah, I'm more than happy to deliver an image like this. The beer bottle down here, that will be removed, obviously. Something like this is an image I did a little bit later on. Uh, just a nice kind of like, um, moment shot you might say and I'm not sure what this brow thing is here but again that will be removed but I just want to show you again the overall sharpness when you zoom in it looks very very sharp I can see basically the pattern on the dress if I bring this down a little bit more I don't want to do it too much it's not blown out or it's tiny tiny bits of blown out lighting there nothing drastic but if we go up here into the corners again it's very very sharp the actual sharpness of the lens is absolutely fantastic. No issues whatsoever. One last image to show that it was absolutely fine for focusing in low light situations as well. Uh, this one could, let's just brighten this one up a little bit. So again, the actual sharpness in the this kind of lighting, absolutely fine. The bokeh in the background or bokeh, um, there's a little bit of onion ringing going on just here, nothing severe. It's a tiny bit busy in places and in other places it's relatively smooth. So it does depend on the actual situation you're in. Otherwise, yeah, this lens performed very, very well. But this is, um, I should say at 3.2 as well. This isn't wide open because I just want to make sure I got enough depth of field for them to look fantastic in the picture. And this will, I will obviously play around with a little bit more. So hopefully you found that review quite useful and it's kind of put your mind at rest whether or not to buy this lens or go for the G Master or the 24 to 105 or whatever lens you want to buy. Honestly, if your mind's still not made up, go into a shop, test one out quickly uh, and I promise you, you will love the results. Ultimately, it's got to be your choice whether you think the 2875 is the right lens for you, whether that four millimeters really makes that much of a difference it doesn't make that much of a difference, promise you. Um, and for me personally, I think this is probably one of the only lenses that you need to buy 
for them now anyway. Obviously, we want to buy more lenses. Um, but anyway, that's just my thoughts and feelings on this particular lens. I really like it, and hopefully you will too. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, I plan on doing a follow-up video of the Tamron 2875 against the Canon 2470 2.8 Mark II. Why compare those three lenses? Well, basically because there's a lot of Canon shooters swapping over to Sony, and knowing that there's some decent lenses on that particular brand is... It's quite important actually, especially if you're a wedding photographer like myself, you want to know that you're going to basically move from one system to, over to the other and you're going to still get fantastic quality. So I'm going to do a quick comparison between the two in the follow up video in the next week or two or whenever it is. Uh, but so keep your eyes open for that one and yeah, I'll catch you next time.